Welcome back. At City Council this week, the SPCA was denied its request not to pay property taxes on land that has been set aside for its future home. Brittany Matika explains. The SPCA purchased the land located at 3714 47th Street for $1 in 2015 from the city, with hopes of building a new facility. The original building was built in 1978 and they are looking to modernize with a new build on their new land site. The economy's changed, their fundraising uh, base and things like that have changed. So there's a piece of property sitting vacant that by title is the SPCA's. So what happened was they, they were assessed property taxes like any other property owner. The SPCA did apply for an exemption but council denied their request as the property is vacant and they are not conducting business there at this time. Administration will work with them to, to resolve that property taxes and determine the ownership of the property until they're prepared to build on a piece of property as we discussed in City Council. Where that location will be in the future is be working with SPCA and the City in joint cooperation because it, we, need, we need the SPCA, they need the City and we'll work together going forward. We have a really great partnership with the city. Um, council is uh, very supportive um, in my conversations with them prior and um, after um, the meeting and council meeting yesterday. Um, I got a sense that they are definitely um, wanting to work uh, with us. They understand our situation. Brittany Matika, New Cap News. And the Lloyd Cultural and Science Centre has brought Anne Frank's story to life with an exhibit detailing her journey through the Holocaust. Ezra Bashir has the story. Many of us have heard the story of Anne Frank. This exhibition, however, puts her and her family's life into context with World War II. So it tells the story of Anne Frank through pictures and text. Um, it's set up as a timeline. On one side of the timeline, we have Anne Frank's story um, told in conjunction with the rise of National Socialism, uh, with the Second World War, and the persecution of the Jewish people. The exhibit comes from Amsterdam, the Anne Frank House that developed initially as tours through schools to educate younger demographics and has now moved to a museum setting. I'm just walking through the galleries, a lot of the visitors are very quiet, absorbing some of the information. It's not really one of those exhibitions that you have a, um, a lot of emotional response in terms of happy or uh, excited. Anne Frank's story is a reminder of the past that shall not be repeated and the fact that discrimination can have on a society. Any community can benefit from a show like this, especially with a lot of the things that are happening in our world today that we can relate to, that we see on the news. The popularity of the exhibit has drawn many students and children of all ages to take a walk through the life of Anne Frank. I think it opens their eyes, like especially the younger demographic, to the, like I said, what can happen to someone of their, their age. The exhibit will run until September. As a Bashir, New Cap News. Well, this week's pet project features Oreo, a male cat that came in as a stray last month, and Sherman, a gentle dog hoping to find his forever family. Here's John from the SPCA. big ball of fur is Oreo. Oreo came to the shelter as a stray in early June and has been winning over the hearts of everyone since. This feline Casanova just adores people. The minute he sees someone new, he's at the front of his kennel rubbing against the bars and purring his heart out. Oreo isn't a big fan of playing with toys. He much prefers to laze away the day napping on a scratching post. However, when it's time to eat, he'll let you know with a big meow and a few rubs against your leg. He didn't get to be such a big fellow without a healthy appetite. If you're looking for a wonderful feline companion to love you unconditionally, then you just have to meet Oreo. Stop by the SPCA and say hi to him today. Sherman is one gentle giant that is sure to warm your heart. One look into his gentle eyes and you'll be hooked. Sherman is a very quiet and mild-mannered dog. He is always calm and rarely jumps up. Rather, he quietly observes his surroundings. Sherman enjoys being outside, but isn't overly active. Rather, he likes to lay out in the sunshine and grab a quick nap. Sherman would be a great companion to have when you're outside gardening or mowing the lawn. Sherman is a dog that is looking for a special companion to give him all the love and attention he deserves. If that sounds like you, then come down to the SPCA and meet Sherman today. And the City of Lloydminster has issued a business license suspension for a security company contacting residents through door-to-door -door sales. Vivint Canada says they had their license taken away for 30 days after several complaints were made to the city about their salesmen. We decided that we needed a more in-depth look. The um, suspension of the business license allows us that opportunity to do that while preventing uh, any further door-to-door -door activities. 
Vivin Canada says the suspension will not affect their current home security customers and that they are working with the city to resolve the issue. Over the next 30 days, we've asked residents to respond to us uh, through the bylaw at lloydminster.ca email or by uh, contacting 780-874-3710, which is the bylaw telephone number, and provide us uh, any interactions, that, good or bad, that they've had with the, uh, with the company. Vivin Canada currently has a business license for the town of Vermilion until July 24th. Anyone in the Reapers Rugby Loop know it's been a challenge putting together a team in recent years. Joining forces with Cold Lake this season has helped, but when one wall is knocked down, another rises. Lance Phillips with more. The Reapers and Penguins took the form of the latter in a tandem of games in Cold Lake this weekend. The women's side played a spirited match against the Edmonton Pirates, ending a season-long losing streak in a 19-19 tie. We are from three cities. We never get to play with each other besides game day. So to step up and be able to put on that great of a defense and offensively they've played, I'm, I'm so proud of my girls right now. The women's uh, game before the men's, man, that was a contest. An excellent contest. Good technical rugby, lots to be happy about there. Fort McMurray, Cold Lake and Lloyd Minster are the three cities that have combined to form one squad. And it's not without its challenges challenges all parties are finding ways to overcome. When we come together each week, like it's, it's been better and better because we start to learn the flow and how we play with each other and what our strengths are and what we need to work on. Well, with every game, we get a little more cohesive. We start to pick up on each other's cues. The road trips are fine. Like you said, like we want to play rugby. We're pretty much willing to do anything to play rugby. So we're willing to drive the five hours, four hours, whatever it is to come and play. The men face similar dilemmas, although their team pulls from two cities. It's like herding cats. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had a, uh, a bunch of players that had just joined us. We didn't have a chance to work together with them. It's a bit of a mess, but we, we're having fun anyways. So, Yet despite all these obstacles, everyone on the pitch shares a common love. Ah, well, we're still healthy here playing off rugby, so <laughs> it's always fun. And then going having a beer after the game. And it's a lot of fun, you know, yeah. you get hit, but it's adrenaline. Yeah. And if you, if you do hit the right way and you get tackled the right way, mm -hmm. you know, you get, you get hurt doing any sport. Yeah. Rugby's no different. Exactly, exactly. And in rugby, there is a position for everyone, yeah. from small and short to tall and big, fitness levels of all sizes. There is a position for everyone on that field, so everyone is included. Lance Phillips, Newcap Sports, Cold Lake. Well, golf, it's certainly not a game of perfect, and it doesn't have to be. Sometimes little improvements are small victories. Lance Phillips recently spent a day at the Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club and brings us episode one of Tips from the Green. It's a beautiful day out here in Cold Lake. I'm Lance Phillips, joined by Ryan Vaughn, head golf professional at the Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club. And Ryan, today we're gonna go through the bag and you're gonna kind of tell us what's in the bag. Because this is an important thing, because I feel like in mine, I have too many things. Too many things? Yeah, like I know I have 15 clubs and that is definitely not right. One over the limit already. So I've already incurred how many strokes? Two, two strokes. If you play, it's two strokes per hole, up to four strokes. So haven't even started to pull the clubs out and I'm already in the hole. So that's, that's not good. So, so we need to take <laughs> one club out of your bag to start the round. Um, every, every player should start with 14 clubs in their bag. Um, the mixture is up to you, kind of. Um, what I carry in my bag when I play, uh, driver three wood, I hit a two iron, I go four through uh, pitching wedge, and then I carry a 52, 56, and 60 degree wedges, and uh, along with my putter. Beyond what clubs you have, let's talk about what are in the pockets, because I, I feel like a lot of people maybe don't have the right things in the pockets, or they, ha they don't have some necessities that they should have, and I think, I think <laughs> you've got some stuff in there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. First things first, uh, always start with mosquito spray. Key. Especially out here. Out here, our, our back <laughs> nine is full of uh, full of mosquitoes, especially in the evenings and early mornings uh, with, with the weather we've had this spring. So uh, mosquito spray, always have that in the bag. Um, some, some other golf necessities, uh, a divot tool, Cold Lake Golf and Winter Club. Uh, make sure you have that, to our superintendents and our green staff always uh, appreciate you fixing that. Yeah, definitely. Fixing the ball marks on the green. 
uh, Advil for those uh, <laughs> for those uh, tough rounds. Um, sometimes it's a grind out there. So I'm surprised. Like I feel like I would need a giant bottle of that. <laughs> like that's that's pretty small that's for my That's pretty small. Uh, I'm currently out of it. So. <laughs> Is that, saying, is that saying something about your game? Yeah, a little practice needed. <laughs> uh, a rangefinder. Uh, they came out with these uh, a few years ago. Uh, kind of helps you determine how far you are and from the pin and uh, gives you um, gives you a little easier club control, we'll call it. One other thing I want to mention was uh, rain gear. Do you keep rain gear in your bag at all? We, uh, I do keep a lot of rain gear uh, when I play, uh, when we travel and play around Alberta in the Alberta Professional Series. We, uh, I definitely carry it, so we definitely make sure it's in the bag. Well, Ryan, that's great. I mean, I, I learned a lot just in this that I have some, some excavating to do in my bag, yeah. shall we say, because uh, some of the necessities you have, I don't have. I'm <laughs> sure a lot of other people don't have. Coming up next week on Tips from the Green, we're going to be reaching into this bag and pulling out one key club that will drop a lot of strokes off your game.